This is a replica of a Gemini Command module first launched in March of 1965, and we've come a long way since then. In fact, we're building telescopes that can see through time. It's no secret, the universe is enormous, and comparatively speaking, our species' time on this planet has been remarkably brief. Yet, since the dawn of civilization, we have looked to the stars, searching for answers. For millennia, we've studied the movements of the heavens, and in recent decades, we've ventured farther and farther from our terrestrial home. In October of 2018, NASA and a group of international collaborators will continue our exploration, launching the James Webb Space Telescope. The JWST will allow us to see further than ever before to the formation of the first stars and galaxies. But how does this all work? How can a telescope see into the past? We met with senior project scientist, Nobel laureate Dr. John Mather to explore how the James Webb functions and what we can expect to find out there in the deep. People have said that the JWST will, in effect, see through time. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about what it's seeing and, and why that's important? Sure, the Webb Space Telescope sees back through time by looking at things far away as they were when they sent light out. If you look at something really, really far away, like five billion light years away, you see it as it was five billion years ago. So we really directly look back in time. It's pursuing infrared astronomy. So infrared uh, is uh, light that uh, you can't necessarily see with your own eyes. Uh, so we start with 0.6 microns wavelength, which is red and you could see it. We go all the way out to 28 microns, which is a lot longer and it's more like what your body radiates. You're transmitting 500 watts of infrared power as we stand here, but we have the sensitivity to pick up the heat of a bumblebee at the distance of the boom. Could you tell us a little bit about some of the science that's particularly exciting, some of the first, uh, first steps in the program once uh, JWST reaches L2? Well, after it's working, and we're sure that it's working and it's all focused, uh, we have um, four major areas that people said they wanted to do a long time ago. So first thing was, uh, what's the farthest away thing you could see? The farthest back in time you could see. So what are the first stars and galaxies like? How did they grow? What are the first black holes like and when did they turn up? So we don't know. Got to go look. Nature is always full of su surprises on this one. Closer to home, how are the stars being born? So you know there's a solar system being born every few months in our Milky Way galaxy and we'd like to see how it happens. We are prevented from seeing inside because those beautiful glowing dust clouds that we see out there, they're opaque. The Hubble cannot see through them. Uh, neither can anybody else's telescope. But the infrared light that we will be receiving can come around the dust grains and come to our telescope and we'll be able to see inside the cloud. Closer to home, we really want to see how, are the, how do solar systems grow and uh, why is the solar system like it is. So Earth is special. Uh, Earth is alive. Uh, it's the only one that we know of so far that's alive. Uh, so let's look at the rest of the planets in the solar system and let's do what we can with the planets that we're finding around other stars. Mm -hmm. So as you know, we've got thousands of planet candidates around other stars and some of them we can pick up with the Webb telescope. We've got two methods. Either you can see the little dot orbiting, which is unusual, it's hard to do, or you can see um, the planet going in front of its star. So when the planet goes in front of its star, it blocks starlight, you can tell that it's there. But if you're really good at this and, and we our telescope is designed to be able to do this, uh, you can analyze the light that went through the planetary atmosphere on its way from the star to a telescope. So we can spread it out into a spectrum, get the colors, get the chemical composition of an atmosphere of a planet around another star. So uh, we think that if somebody can find a more or less Earth-like planet around a more or less small version of the Sun, we should be able to tell if that planet has enough water to have an ocean. That would be a clue that there are planets like Earth way out there. Astronomers already have ideas about what we'd like to do next. Obviously, people want to travel through the solar system and see if the planets that we know of are alive, or even the satellites of Jupiter or Saturn where they've got oceans. That would be really cool. In the telescope business, we've got uh, ideas to go look for the dark energy to see what that is about. So it, the US and Europe are both planning telescopes to look for that. So there's a lot of inventions we have to perfect. And, um, and of course, somebody's got to say start so we can start. <laughs> so there you have it. In just a few short years, our species will have built, launched and operated a telescope capable of seeing all the way back to a period of the universe's development that we have never seen before. And who knows what else we'll find along the way. Thanks so much for watching. If you'd like to learn more about the James Webb Space Telescope or space exploration, check out our website now.howstuffworks.com.